now that we've got our decimated mesh exported so that we can use that to bake maps and as a base for retopology operations, now we can go back to our ZBrush sculpt and take a look at some of the geometry we have and see if we can use any of it, uh, not even as the final uh, high geometry, but maybe even just as a base to, to work from. So I like to always go in and, and see what I can kind of scavenge. You can of course build everything again from scratch using retopology and in the game uh, focused course, that's what we're gonna do. But here, I think there's a lot of the pieces that we can use and we can kind of manipulate them in certain ways so that we can uh, use them as the actual production geometry. And so uh, I'm gonna come in here, this is O2 begin. Uh, I'm going to turn off the clothing. And so this just has all the pieces with the, if it had any subdivision levels or dynamesh or anything like that, it's not decimated. Uh, these are the kind of the raw pieces. And so what we're gonna focus on here is the, the skin. And as you can see, the only place that we can really see the skin are where there are holes in the jumpsuit. Okay, the jumpsuit is pretty form fitting. And so what we wanna do is get rid of any of the geometry underneath the jumpsuit. Now, as a caveat uh, to this, we're creating geometry that we can use to render. And so we can have that geometry be a little bit more high resolution versus something that's for a game engine. But if you're creating a creature or a character for film, sometimes you'll even build it from the inside out. So you'll build the, the skeleton and then you'll have muscles on top and then you'll simulate skin sliding over the top of those muscles as they uh, bulge and change as the character moves. And so depending on your pipeline, it's going to be a little bit different how you create this. So we're creating as a, uh, still as kind of a, just a shell, uh, but we're gonna create something that's a little bit more high res that we can use to render in Maya with Arnold after we create textures for it. So just kind of set expectations for that. So having said that, I, I can either keep the, the entire body or I can just keep the pieces that are showing here. And so one of the, the things that we can do here is I'm gonna go in and the jumpsuit here, you can see is our last sub tool. I'm actually gonna make a copy. So I'll just hit duplicate and then I'm just gonna move it up underneath the body. So here we have our body and our jumpsuit. I'm gonna go ahead and under geometry on the jumpsuit, I'm just gonna delete any of the lower subdivision levels. And let's turn off the visibility on the original as well. All right, now the jumpsuit was created from the body. So, so the polygons that are inside are kind of sitting right on side, uh, right on top of the, uh, the skin. But we've also done a little bit of modeling to this and kind of pulled it out in some areas. So I'm gonna take the jumpsuit and come down to deformation and I'm just gonna inflate it. And let's just do maybe, let's try five to begin with. Okay, that's probably a little bit too much. So I'm gonna do, depending on your scale, I'm gonna do maybe two. Okay, now what I wanna do is I wanna actually merge these together. And a lot of times when I'm doing sort of merging and things like that, I'll create a copy just in case something happens, I can very quickly go back and redo things. And so I'm gonna also duplicate the body here. And then on the body under geometry, I'm gonna see, I think Dynamesh is turned on. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. And then I'm going to actually merge the body, uh, the copy of the body and the copy of the jumpsuit. So with that second body selected, I'm just gonna say merge down and okay. And so now we have a subtool that is just the body and the jumpsuit all in one subtool, but still with two geometry islands. So now what I wanna do is I wanna mask off the areas where these intersect. And I can do that using a Z plugin. And we're gonna to go to intersection masker. And we've got that subtool selected. So we'll go to Z plugin, create intersection mask. So it's gonna go through, it uses the uh, Boolean technology that exists in ZBrush to do this. But what's gonna happen is it's gonna create a mask where these two meshes intersect which will allow us to eliminate some of the geometry that we need to. All right, so with that finished, let's go ahead and split these back apart. So we're gonna to go to split, split to parts, say okay. And now we should have two different subtools here. We've got the, uh, the jumpsuit, and then we've got the body that we masked. And you can see the masking. You can see the lines where the legs are, okay? So this gives us kind of a good area to work from. 
And so now what we can do is go in and just with our mask brush, we get kind of a smaller draw size. We can go in and fill in those areas where we need to mask things off. Okay. So what we're really after are those boundaries where the holes are. So we'll do the insides of the elbows, back of the pelvis and the back. along here and the neck opening there okay now the legs you can see they're a little bit off and so what I'm going to do is extend the legs up into the pants a little bit because they do uh, come off of the legs slightly so instead of masking here I'm gonna unmask and just kind of bring that up a little bit higher So you want it to go up at least as high as that V. We'll go ahead and we can add some masking right there, the back of the knee. And clean that up a little bit. And so this gives us a mask that indicates the geometry that we don't need anymore. Okay, just make sure we've got everything masked. You can see there's a few little areas that we've missed. All right, so let's get it to this point. And now we can actually split these apart. So let's come down to split again, and let's split unmasked points. All right, so now that's gonna create two subtools, one of which has the geometry that we need here. All right. So we'll go ahead and I'm gonna turn off, actually delete this one, we don't need this one. And then this was our jumpsuit that had the masking created on it, it was the, the jumpsuit copy, so we'll delete it as well. Okay, so if we take a look at our poly frame, it's the same topology that existed before we uh, deleted everything. You can also see that the poly groups that were on there from before are still there. So I wanna actually change that, so I'm gonna to go to poly groups and just auto group it so that you've got different poly groups for each one. Then let's come up to geometry, Z remesher, and I wanna choose keep groups. I wanna keep the poly groups, and I'm gonna choose the smooth groups border and turn that up. And let's go ahead and we'll choose half resolution. So it's gonna roughly get, try to get half the, the resolution that we currently have on this. So we'll go ahead and hit Z remesher. Let that think for a minute. So you can see that everything is a little bit cleaner. You're losing some of the detail, but as this is not a game res mesh, that's okay. We can also come in if you wanted to, to get it even a little bit lower, knowing that we're gonna have some baked maps that are gonna go on this. You really wanna just pay attention to uh, the silhouette. You wanna make sure the silhouette's good. We can always uh, use displacement or normal maps to get the, the geometry that we need. So you can see there where we're getting a little bit of weirdness around the edges. Another thing you can do when you're using Z remesher is to use guides. So if we choose Z remesher guide, and let's come in, and I wanna define where some loops are gonna go. So let's say that we wanna make sure that we get loops kinda of coming around this way, and then also kind of here and we can come down and just sort of draw in the flow that we want. Now it's not going to be exact, but now when we go into Z remesher, we can also use the curve strength. So there you can see the curve strength uses the guides to influence the loops. The higher number you use for this, the closer it's going to hew to the where those curves are. So let's go ahead and try that and see if we get something a little bit better. Still using half. So I think it's pretty good. There's maybe some issues there, but they're flowing a little bit better than what we had before. And again, we're going to have maps on that. We're not going to see the polyframe there. The normals will be smooth. You won't see that uh, jaggedness. And also we can smooth those and subdivide them. All right. So that's geometry that we can use for the skin. We can also instead of doing the initial UVs in Maya, 
We can also just do some really quick UVs so that we have something to work with when we go to Maya. These are not going to be the final UVs at all by any means, uh, but we can go in here really quickly and go into UV master and let's go ahead and we've got symmetry and polygroups. I don't think we need the polygroups because there's already geometry islands, but if you do have continuous geometry, you can actually separate the islands based on polygroups, which is nice. Okay, let's go ahead and unwrap it. All right, so we've got now our skin pieces unwrapped. If you wanna see what it looks like, you can see there's our UV layout. So that's the, the UVs. You can see the starfish hands there, which are not ideal, but we'll be able to modify the UVs. This is just kind of uh, doing an initial kind of unwrap for these that will travel with the geometry when it comes over to Maya. So we can go ahead and unflatten. And so next, what we're going to do is turn our attention to the jumpsuit. And so that's going to really define the rest of his body. And so let's see if we can get some initial geometry out for that. So we'll do that next.